church. Um, before we go into the business of today, I want you to help me appreciate all the parents in this room. And if you're a parent, appreciate yourself. You guys are amazing. And I'll tell you why. Um, you may already know that I am one of your children's teacher, and I teach the class 9 to 12. And they are such brilliant children. They are amazing. They are so smart, and they are very well-rounded. And, you know, if you see children like that, you can just imagine, you know, what goes on in the home front. So your children are very well-rounded, and I'm proud of the caliber of parents we have in this church. Appreciate yourself once again. However, we have, you know, I mean, as with every good thing, there'll be one or two things to address, and those are the things we are going to address here this morning. So before we call our regional overseer to help us answer some questions, I'd like you to... I see we've missed Pastor Toby. We've really missed you, Pastor Toby, obviously. All right. Um, before I bring Pastor Toby up to help us address some of these issues, I'd like you to take this one prayer for yourself, whether you're a parent or you're an aspiring parent, um, pray this prayer for yourself. Say, my father, give me the wisdom to be a parent after your heart. All right, sorry about that. Pastor Toby wants me to um, tell you some of the things. I thought he was going to help me, but he said, you know, I should just do it myself. All right, so um, like I said, your children, they engage us teachers at um, a very intellectual level. In fact, some of them are older than their ages. They are so smart, absolutely smart. Now, but um, recently, one second, please. Recently, um, I'm going to read out some of the things that your children have been saying. And um, we just thought, oh, let's address everything here. Recently, we asked them if they would talk to their parents, if they have any pressing issues. And in a class of about 60 children, only five of them said, yes, I'll tell my parents if I have issues. I mean, pressing issues as with regards to probably relationship and all of that. Mind you, I'm talking about children ages 9 to 12. So, let me bust your bubble. You see, that thing you don't want to talk to them about, they already know. So, the unfortunate thing is that they didn't hear it from you first. And that's the sad thing. Um, I know it's a difficult conversation to have with children uh, because I'm a parent of um, preteen and teen myself. I know, and I remember when I was going to talk to my daughter um, I know that this conversation, they start talking, uh, they start discussing um, these matters in um, year six, going on year seven. By year seven, they know everything. Don't deceive yourself. So I, I wanted to be the first person to tell her. I wanted to tell her my version and the version, the word of God, you know, everything about the word of God. And then I prayed and prayed, and I was you know, a, bit, a bit jittery. I was, you know, but... You know what? I said, I'll do it. Let me just do it and die. And then I called her, and I told her everything. You know, she, she was surprised. I'm like, oh, wow, no. And so many funny things started happening. Now, she was going to come into our room. She would knock extra hard, back, 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 like, you know. But it was easy with my daughter. But my son, uh, you know how our men are. So I, I called my husband and said, you know, we need to have this conversation it was turning 10. And my husband said, please just leave me. If this is your thing, go and do it. You know, I felt like it should come from a guy. You know, have the boys talk. But he wasn't going to. I said, okay, let's do it together. So he agreed. That day, well, he agreed, well, just stayed with me. He did not open his mouth. <laughs> and I thought, now this is going to be the undoing of me. I'm talking to a boy now. Again, I said, let me just do it and die. I knew that, you know, let me, I've done it. It was really hard. But I'm happy I did because now they'll come and tell me 
things. Even some of the things they tell me, I'm shocked, I'm surprised, I want to, but I just take it in. And sometimes I need help, sometimes I run to Pastor Toby, sometimes it's Pastor Fumi. I'm like, okay, what do I do? What do I say to him? How do I handle this? Because to be honest, we, don't, we, we all don't have it figured out. And this parenting journey is not easy. We, I wish that they came with booklet because, you know, I have three and those three, they are, they are so different. So you can't use the same yardstick for each of those children. It won't work. So um, Pastor Toby will take it from here. Thank you very much, Ma. Praise the name of the Lord. It's good to be back home. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But you know that we pray that God should make us international pastor. So, so get ready for more international assignments. Praise the Lord. Can you always celebrate our wonderful family Sunday team? And... Um, what she's just shared with us is something that we should declare what I call a state of emergency over in this church. Because so many of us think we are having a family, but we are not having a family. What we have is a colony uh, or a barracks where everybody abides by the what? By the rules. And if you know that it is possible for you to think that you are carrying everybody along, carrying your family along, when the only person you have really carried along is yourself. Nobody is going on the journey with you. Nobody understands you. And um, one of the things I've seen, especially in our churches abroad, is the fact that all these children, the way we handle them. They are just waiting for independence. The day they see independence, they turn their back and they run away. Because for 18 years of their life, you were just a general to them. You are just a teacher to them. You will never fulfill the purpose of being a parent. You never looked at them. One of my most... Uh, What's it called? Uh, wonderful scriptures. I have like uh, 15 of them. It's Psalm 127. And I think you should open your Bible there. If I've, uh, if you've, if you've, maybe when we say hard time, if I've had the privilege of some of the children we dedicated nine years ago, they are the ones they are talking about that I was the one that went to go and pray for them. They are the ones that are telling you. And I used to tell parents, I say, they don't even, before they used to talk to me, but the day they see me and their father and mother talking, they would just be laughing. You know why? I'm no more on their side. So it is hard for me to have time to communicate. If I get here now, as I was coming down the stairs, all of them were shaking my hand. You can imagine, I'm not their father. They were shaking. I'm talking of people that are like, they, do not, they were giving me a high five. You, if they try to give you a high five, you are coming out with a strange knock. Am I your mate? You just give them, you don't understand that. It is not the same way they gave back to you in one village in Oshun State. No, it's not, it's not. If you want to use that old idea, you are going to enter problem. I was saying to somebody recently, for any parent that wants to reach a child now, I pity that parent. You have to do extra work. You have to go extra mile because... There is so much madness out there. Those of us who have people that migrate with their children, they just carry their children and they just go, young children, my God. You need to pray for them. We need to tell them that they have to tell these children the truth. And some of them are in an environment whereby if you say that this thing is wrong, they will call it you are homophobic. They will say it's hate speech. You have to have a way of passing it across to them. And looking at Psalm 127, let's look at that interesting scriptures that matters a lot. Say, behold, verse what? Verse 3. Children are what? The heritage of the Lord. And the what? The fruit of the womb, a reward. Look at this interesting verse. It says what? Like 
arrows in the hand of a what? Of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth. Do you know what that means? An arrow cannot function without a bow. An arrow cannot function without somebody having the grace to apply strength and pull it back. An arrow cannot function except you target it and say, this is what I want it to do. That is how God sees children in your hand. You are the one that will create a bow for them. The bow is this period we are talking about. The, the, the target is for you to help them to fulfill their purpose. The strength is in you trying to pull them back. They don't jump away from your hand. And by that they jump away from your hand, they can hurt anybody. And they can hurt themselves. So for parents who are here that really don't have this, what I call, the truth is this, you don't have a relationship with your child. Relationship does not start when they start to talk to you like mature children. Relationship starts from right when they were young. How you spend time with them, how you take their opinion. I was eating somewhere uh, one day, and I saw the way a man was talking to the child. To the ch I was scared. Because the way he was talking, you would think that those children are like his workers. No form of empathy, no form of understanding. He was just shouting and giving strange instructions. So if they are saying they cannot talk to their parents, they cannot relate with their parents, they cannot tell, like I say to everybody, the first boyfriend your child, your daughter must have must be you. Am I making sense to somebody here? The first girlfriend your son must have must be what? Must be you. If you cannot build that, then the danger is this. Whatever the environment tells them is what they will agree to. There are people who are on the two sides of the divide that I've seen. I'm not just going to talk about those that their children cannot talk to them. I'm going to talk about those that they have also become too liberal. And you know in life, everything is balanced diet. If you are not having a balanced spiritual life, there will be a problem. So there must be a level of you being still remaining as a father, but yet you can still maintain that relationship. Not that you are too liberal. And the danger of not doing all this and being very, very firm on this is that these children have limited time with you. Some of them we are talking about now, they are in body now, meaning it is the house master that has trained them for six weeks or for 12 weeks. By the time they come back, they spend one month with you. In that one month, some of you, as they are landing, you are packaging summer school for them. Just get out of my what? Of my sight. There is no time. I have parents in this place who are taking their girl child on holiday. Their children, their female children, by the time they are getting to 12, they are getting to 10. They are putting them, they are booking a place for them to go together. They just want those children to feel relaxed and let them talk. If you don't allow them to express themselves, whatever they have inside of them, they will hide it away from you and they will reveal it somewhere else. And by the time they reveal it somewhere else, if it is accepted, then they begin to make use of it. If it is wrong, then it begins to affect their mentality. So for every parent here, except for those who are just giving birth, for those who have grown up one, the first thing you must do is this. You must take the nature of what? Of studying your child. Some childs are extroverts. Some childs are introverts. When he's not talking, make him talk. When he's talking too much, encourage him that he can talk later. This is a discouraging from that he's talking too much. Encourage him that he can talk what? Little. You must know that what does this child, how does this child perceive of me? What does it perceive? That's what they call studying a child. And there are so many Christian materials that you can do, that you can read, that you can hear, that you can study, that will help you know what is the nature of this child. The next thing is this, that you yourself as a parent, you must be conversant with your environment. When I mean be conversant with your environment, know what is obtainable. When a child comes to you and says, 
he wants to talk about a boy. Look at what happened in school whereby children were on the trip and things, several things were going on. They know about it. They have heard about it. Their mates, you are from a godly home. Maybe their mates is from a dysfunctional home. Maybe their mates is from a place where all kind of things abide. The truth is this. How do you want your child, and he has not got to that kind of person as a word, as a friend. You can't tell the child to cut off from everybody. But at the time you sow godliness into that child, by the time you sow righteousness, you sow holiness into that child, that child will stand with whatever you have taught him or her, and that child will run with it. Nobody will be able to take it away from that child. That is why people like us are standing here. Can we celebrate God for that? So you must be able to have those periods whereby you are their friend. Sit down and let us talk. The only time some of us talk so our children is to give instructions. Some of the other some of us have is that oh, it's to just after they grow up at that place. Some of us, the person that is our children's mother is the nanny. Am I making sense? You say, oh, just carry him away from here. Just go and sit down with them. That is the person that is training them. But if they know you, if they are expressing, we have children that have so many questions within them. They want to ask. Look at, let me, let me give you some of the things that we are talking about here. And I please appeal to you. Take it seriously. Don't look at it and say that, oh, I must be careful. These children are talking too much. No, we, we don't even know children. Worse. I don't even know them and I don't even want to know them. We just want to solve the issues. Look at it. My parents always compare me with my siblings. Like I said, that can be a big problem. Compare, when you are always comparing that this one is this one, they are all different. Don't say because you are a lawyer, all your children must study law. The child has a destiny. Don't look at because somebody is coming out with a word, with so many grades, the other one is not doing well, meaning that one did not come out from your law. You yourself, do you know mathematics? Some of you are here. Before Jesus saved you, you used to carry a spoke. God has not helped you. I now want to steal the team. It's not, it's not hard. You have to lay hands on the child and pray. Look at the testimony of that my big auntie here that came to share. It was not ordinary. It was a family attack. I remember that day when we were praying. I said, bring her. And she began to pray. You that before they finish service, you are running away. Every Sunday for like one year, this young lady was praying after service. Now, she came out with five scholarships. When she was going, she came here to pray. She was emotional. That is what you can do. That's what prayer can do. But because she could communicate, not that you don't know book from today, the only thing you know how to carry your life is remote. Drop that remote. Go upstairs. In this house, there was a child I was talking to. I came to church. We were in that Tent. First Sunday, she sat at the back. She crossed her leg. Praise what she was going on. She didn't say to anybody. I said, ah, she looked at me from head to toe. She didn't say anything. I said, I'm here for this church. <laughs> Second Sunday again. I said, hi, do you know I'm the pastor of this church? She said, who doesn't know you? She didn't say anything again. <laughs> she said anything. So the third Sunday, I went to go and sit beside. I said, I'm not living here today. And I said, how are you? Fine. I said, you don't want to be here. He said, how do you know? I said, who is the problem? He said, my mommy now. You know, of course. So she started talking about the mother. I said, ah, that's not fair. That's very bad. I said, you know, I go to come and see me. So I said, after the service, I said, go and come. She called the mother. And I said, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I said, okay. She's my friend now. So she came from school. And when she entered my office, I said, ma, uh, go out. I said, no, I said, go on, leave me at night alone. She's from school. I said, bring her. Okay. And by the time she opened her mouth, the truth is this. Mommy wants to train her the way she, has, the way she was trained. So I'll be in the kitchen and I'm cooking. If I make mistake of checking my phone while we are cooking, next thing I hear is, bam! That's a problem. So we talked. I said, but if I cook with your sisters, they are, they are, they are, I said, okay, all these things are good. Beloved, we made peace. As I'm telling you today, that girl is one of the best in our school. By the time we are talking to you today, we discover that it's just some little, little things. You know, parents, when you, use, when you want to use money to, to corner one child, 
behind the mother so that you always look good. We discovered all those things. So you must be able to know them. You must study them. You must be ready to listen to them. When they are telling you that somebody is telling them, I love you, your eye will now turn to that of how. Ha! He will not say anything again. So you must. Don't compare your children. Don't make it look as if this one is wise, this one is not wise. Can't you see somebody's child? Can't you see somebody's child? Don't, Bible says, comparing yourself with one another. You are not what? You are not wise. It says, my parents always, the day I told my mom, I had a crush on the boy. She told me crush is demonic. <laughs> crush is not demonic. Crush is a feeling you feel. When you feel something you have never felt before. That's, that's my analysis. So, so if you have questions, please write, bring out the questions. We'll take them. It's a feeling you feel. And if you want to understand crush, it, is, it happened to you. So you have to take time. Nine-year-old are having crush. Eight-year-old are having crush. Seven-year-old, they're having what? Crush. So if you think that that crush is going to crush them, that is where you have a problem. Sit down with them. Let them understand that this thing you are feeling, you still feel it too, but you can control it. It's not time for what? For crush. Avoid your crush. Avoid physical contact with your crush. When you see your crush, look straight. <laughs> are we not making sense? Let your crush be the one crushing on you. Those are things that when you say it to them and you look examples, not in eye tone. Well, as you are saying, you are saying, oh my God, help me. Oh. This one too wants to be like, he wants to. It will have what we call, they cannot relate with you. Some of the examples, I remember the night my mom found out that as a boyfriend, she freaked out so much. She did not, nobody slept that night. So, somebody has a boyfriend. Why don't you, first of all, carry all your children's friends? Why don't you, first of all, bring them closer to your house? Am I making sense to somebody here? Why don't you know all your children's friends? Why don't you know the one that has godly virtue? Why don't you study them? You don't know you can pray about them. Why don't you know who is my child close to? Why don't you open your eyes and say, he has a boyfriend? Well, if the fact that they told you have a boyfriend... Is it not better they have said it to you than to hide it from you and they do things behind? We cannot do things the old way, which is you have a boyfriend now, you are now under what we call family prison. You, the person is locked indoor day and night. Beloved, some of us, we are here. We were not raised like that. And yet, we still could maintain the word of the Lord because we bring them to, they take us to church, they teach us the things of God. We understand what it means when you start keeping boyfriend. We understand what it means when you start doing all those things. Use that example on them. It's not the first time that they will hear, but it will be a seed in their life. Another example we have is I can't talk to my parents because my dad looks too serious. It's all about academics. There are mothers who are like that. The only time you want to have discussion is, let's talk about your, your results. Let's talk about your results. The only time they are, they are appreciated is when they do things. It cannot work like that. Academic is good, but you have to help them to also realize that they can be your friend. You, what did I say? They can be your what? How many of us can say that you are friends with your children, not parents? How many of us say You can. It can. God bless you for those who are like that. Academically, they can grow so much that they will always want to work to be the best in their class. It's about spiritual assistance, constant friendship with them. And the next one says that when asked why they could speak, um, let me give you my own examples that I've also seen is the fact that the parents are always being at loggerheads in front of their, of their children. There's this disconnection in the family, 
and it tells on the children. It affects them. They don't even know who to trust. Some of us are here now. When this year is a six-year-old, your husband offended you. You start down with a six-year-old. Your father is bad. You are reported to a six-year-old. Some of us are here. When somebody you, see, you call them, you call a family meeting, and you are telling them women are useless, and you have a daughter there. So you allow every crack in the family to be open to these children, there will be serious problem. One of the things you have also noticed that you have seen among Christian families about these young people is that they treating sexual issues as a taboo. Teach them now. One of the things you have noticed is this. There is no much love. If you are a parent here and you gave your child a hug this week, raise up your right hand. You can see how few we are. You can see how few. You say, hug for what? <laughs> your children have come back from school. You are just sitting down. As they enter, your bags, your bags, your bags. <laughs> and that child one day went to a house. As they are coming back from school, the first thing their mother did was to give them a what? A big hug and say, I've missed you. How was school today? You say, hey, 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 if I hear fem. <laughs> you know you are back now. If I hear pim, all of you are dead. <laughs> that is what they come to meet. You drop them in school in the morning. You look at them and say, you've not given me a hug before you go inside. Even you, you're not even hugging your wife. It's only when you have a girl, you hug her. <laughs> I'm not talking about you want to hug, you want to hug anybody. So these are the issues. The love you don't give them, they will look for it outside. Am I making sense? Those things you are not showing them, those things you are not that they, if they have it in the house, and listen, those of you who are chasing money, you leave home in the money, you don't see them. On Saturday, you are out again. On Sunday, you are out again. You don't do all those things. Listen to me, you can look for all this money, and when this money is gone, this children will not be there for you. I can tell you a true life story. I was speaking to a big man, very wealthy man, and was telling me about his friend. His friend was calling him, and he said, Pastor Toby, this thing is so sad. I said, what happened, sir? He said, my friend canceled important meetings here to go and, his wife has died. He wants to go and meet up with his kids for his graduation. And he left meetings that everybody was saying, you cannot. He said, no, I'm going. And he landed in his house in America. As he landed in his house in America, he didn't know. The child just came in. As he came in, he saw him, greeted him. And if my, the boy felt he was sleeping. And the next day, the boy started packing all his load. He was packing all his load. And he was talking to his wife. He said, that old man is here again. Just, I don't know what he's, what's coming for. He has never been there for me. Why is he coming here? Because he just wants to do photo, photo ops so he can post that I've... I'm the best graduating child. It's not been there. I don't know. I'm just coming to your place. I'm not joking. He wept, packed his bag, and came back. And he was depressed. Because how can a child you come to come and visit run away from you? Because all your life you have been running away from them. So we must know that these are serious family issues. And Lord help us in Jesus' name. Any question for us? Thank you very much, Pastor Tobi. Okay, someone says, it's out, it sounds easy saying these things from the pulpit. Can you give us practical ways to talk to our preteens and teens? Uh, Star Bosun, Pastor Fumi, I know uh, Auntie Emmy is up there, and I think Pastor Solomon, I think we'll organize a parent forum. Are we cool with that? So I think we'll organize it. One of the things we say is this, every home must have a prayer altar. Prayer softens hearts. If you don't have a prayer altar in your family, like I say to everybody here, how many women here are the pastor and the men are the lay leader in their family? You know you are the one doing all this ritual warfare. May God help you. You need more fire. A man should be the priest over his house. Pray over your children. Because of Lagos life, once a week, Saturday, do family time with them. Open the Bible, share the word of God, let them know God. When, let them ask biblical questions. 
When they ask rabbinical questions, this word demonic, some of them don't know. Some of us came from different churches. They don't even know, die, be dying, be dying. They just say, this woman is just shaking her head. Explain to them the way we have explained to you. Always have a family time together. I expect parents for Sunday, one Sunday in a month, we all know that foil has gone up. Take your family out. You don't have to go to big places. Just take them out. In that meeting, don't be arguing with your wife in that meeting. Talk over things. Appreciate. Look at their eating culture. Look at the way they are. Relate with them better. That's what we are saying. It's very simple. Relate with them better. Why is it that they are relating with us that we meet them once every Sunday? Why is it that they, they are ready to talk to their teachers? Why are they communicating with us the way they are? Why is it that if I sit down with them now, they bring any child there who, who is, I've seen the one abroad who is holding knives to church. They brought him to me. He brought him down. He said, he said, yes, I want to change. It's because I'm not going to judge them. I'm not going to castigate them. I just want to help you. So it's very practical. But I promise you, we have a lot of parents in the house who have grown people down to university levels. And I can say that these are testimonies. I can see them in the congregation. We shall have a parent forum. I think we should hold it between now and the end of um, August. Can we please appreciate God for that? So, we'll, and everybody will do it. We'll be, we'll be there. Yes. Next question. Um, my teenager is problematic. Not all children can be handled with the kids' glow. I need to be tough with her. <laughs> Are you a police officer? You know, one of the things you don't know that some of us don't know the power of love. What did I say? Power of love. The, the admin part you are doing, do you want to go and be staying with her in the university? You will go in the morning. You will come back in the evening. Is that what you want to be doing in the university? So why don't you use other methods? We have spoken about prayer. I've told you about the one who was sitting in the church, that was sitting in the church, became my friend so much that the love I showed her made her father to come and worship her who does not come to MFM. I told you, came to my office, solved things. I, I've seen parents that they, they suspended the two of them from school. They suspended the two of them from school at the same time. And the woman came <laughs> without issues. You know what pay me? They were laughing. So I said, ma, go out. And I said, what happened? He said, this woman is wicked. <laughs> I'm not joking. In one of the best schools, I said, tell me. He said, do you know that she will not give us our provision to school when we finish it? He says, because we are eating it too much. And they are rich, oh. He said, no. He said, the, the, we'll buy it in bulk. He just say, no. This is what you must take. You must not take this one. He says, she'll be caught in the same again, sir. Can you imagine? She'll be telling us to mop every Saturday morning. That thing alone. You know what solved my problem? A bag of chocolate from my office. And this guy say every time she does anything that is paining you, come and report to what? To me. They are better children tomorrow. So you have to use other method. You were trained with Cain. Doesn't mean that you should train your child with what? With Cain. That parent should please see us. We'll try and see how we can work things around it. Yes, sir. For parents who, because of financial issues, have their children with their grandparents, how do they still build a relationship with their children? You, are, you need prayers to have financial deliverance. Another person cannot train your child for you. So please, if you're that person, try your best to go and pick that child and start imputing godly virtues in that child. Yes. Um, this is not a parenting question. Um, this person says, anytime my husband and I have a misunderstanding, he stops eating and he asks his mom to make food bowls for him. <laughs> And she obliges him. I try so much not to be disrespectful to her. This happens all the time. What can I do? P.S. He's not been eating at home since September. I've asked what I did wrong. He's not said anything. He's, so, he's someone who has an unforgiving spirit. <sighs> you have married a baby husband. So your house is the branch. His mom's place is the headquarters. Uh, may the Lord turn things around. Uh, one of the things I will tell that woman is, you, you, 
I used to, do you know how to cook, number one? Because if you know how to cook, you can make him eat. Number two is that you need to pray for your marriage. And oftentimes, two people cannot be rough at the same time. So you should calm down so that we can win him back. Yes, people say, hey, it's always us that calm down. We also see men too who calm down to win their wives back. So you should calm down. You should prayerfully bring your marriage to a point of understanding and look for somebody that he respects a lot. That's why we say when you want to marry, marry somebody who is accountable, somebody that has someone that he fears. If, even if it's someone that you can go to and you can just appeal. There are so many times I've told women to wake up their husband at 2 a.m. and kneel down, and it has helped their marriage. 2 a.m., kneel down to your husband. There's no camera revealing that she knelt down to me yesterday. Am I making sense to somebody here? Beg him that let this thing come to an end so that you can even train your child together. I think, I think I've answered that. Yes, you have. Thank you. Um, this person says, is it possible to be in love with someone younger than you? And does it lead to marriage? If it can, if it can any advice for the lady? See us for counseling. There's nothing wrong if you marry somebody that is younger than you. The truth is that one of you must stop celebrating big birthdays if you want to, if you want everybody to know. So the only thing is this, is make sure and have that understanding that after you're married, there will still be a level of respect. Know that before we say anything, you are, everybody's throwing the age card at each other. I'm older than you, it's because you're younger than me. So if you have that understanding and both of you can go ahead. But it's, it's left, so far God is involved. Yes, sir. My husband is amazing, God-fearing, kind, and responsible. I want to believe that I'm a good wife. I miss our dating days where he will take me out and I can stare into his eyes and blush. These days, it feels like the only time I can get that out is if I hang out with my own friends or go out with colleagues. I want a vacation with him, a dinner date or something I have talk to him about it, and he says he has bills to pay. He's a good man. I just want to feel like I am still an item on his list that he cherishes enough to pay attention to. God bless you. You too, carry him out. <laughs> so, uh, if it is every time that, he, maybe the man knows that you like to chop his money. So you to carry him out. And um, everybody, every family should learn how to go on vacation. I'm saying it. Don't wait. Vacation must not be abroad. People go to Ghana. People go to, there are different resorts on this axis. So don't, if you are not going on vacation, uh, may the spirit of hard labor not wound you and put it in your timetable. Like I've said, there are so many resorts on this axis where you can take your family to. There's one that people even go to, just outside them, say my brother there. Some people go there, I know families in this church that go there. It's not, they go by road. They go like group of three or four families together. That's where they spend their, uh, their December. And they come back. It is good. It takes you away from the stress of there's no light, there's no this, there's no this, there's no that one. And if you are praying for, to God, God will always give you supply. The next thing from what we have heard is take him out and also try as much as possible to, we are also planning on what we call a couple's retreat. So I will know that it's going to happen this year whereby we can go into details of all these things. And that day, every couple must buy the ticket. I will stand by the door. We will not lock the door. We will lock the door. You will drop the money before you leave here. So it's going to be for couples whereby they can go on the couple's retreat and we'll just spend like three days there so that people can come, talk to us, and bring back the honey in our marriage. Praise the name of the Lord. Yes, ma'am. Over to you. Is it proper for a woman to pack out of the house after some few misunderstandings with her partner, even when the partner recognizes his fault and apologizes? It is wrong and... Nobody should pack out, whether you're a man or a woman, it is not advisable. You are writing letter to home destruction if you do that. 
every conversation that leads to disagreement is too immature people's uh, fault. Every, every conversation that leads to fighting is too people who have not grown. It's not every conversation that must lead to fight. It must lead to resolution and conflict resolution is important in life. There are situations whereby you're just sitting down with people, 30 years conflicts are resolved, 20 years conflict are resolved, and if you are in that situation, seek for counseling. One of the things I appreciate this program for is that people are beginning to come out, to speak, and they are seeing the results. So please seek for counseling for that situation. Can we just take two more? Then, then we go on. Why is it that we are having more Christian women or sisters disregarding the biblical principle of men's headship in marital union? And nowadays talk more of equality that doesn't recognize the responsibility of a husband's headship and authority in marriage. All right. Very deep question. I'll go to answer it from two angles. Number one angle is this. The Bible is calls the man the head of the house. But when you are the head of the house, it doesn't mean that you should not destroy the house. It means you should lead right. It means you should guard right. It means you should protect. It means you should be, let's say, a provider. It means you should be a defender. It means you should be a trainer. It means you should be a coach. But when you reduce your responsibilities as a leader, and you hand it over to a woman, and you are still doing so with so much arrogance and pomposity and no form of remorse, then that is where there's going to be a bit of what? Of clash. When you are always saying, oh, what are you bringing to the table? What are you bringing to I'm not saying it is bad. Like we had here some months back, if the woman is doing most of the things in the house, something in her one day will want to rise and speak up. And even if she's not doing most of the things in the house, always give her that honor that she's not your maid, she's your assistant. And if she's the neck, you are the head. The neck, too, has power to control the what? The head. So I feel that the place of feminism, I totally disregard. The place of equality, according to the Bible, I totally disregard. But the place of honor and respect should be given, which is vice versa. Thank you. Thank you very much, yes, sir. So final question here. Why should it be women praying for cheating husbands? Why can't the men pray for themselves? We have, we have uh, cheating women too. We have cheating women too. Uh, one of the reasons why I will answer is that the Bible says a white woman builds her what? Her home. And if you know that the enemy has always been trying to attack marriages so you praying for your cheating spouse. And if there are cheating spouse here, I pray that the Lord deliver you, Jesus. Name. So if you are praying for your cheating spouse, it's because you are more spiritual and you are the one that the Lord is giving that responsibility to. So it's nothing, I don't say who prays or who does not pray. Some of these men too, we've seen men who go from cheating to become godly. And we also see women too who cheat because, and their husband forgave and they are still living together. I'm a pastor, so I hear all these things, I see all these things, I intervene in all these things. So it's not just one sided. The same thing we say to is what? Let's pray for this woman. And beloved, the marriage is still working. So don't look at prayer as punishment. In your praying for your husband, you have grown your prayer life for your what? For yourself. So. Don't let us see it as punishment. It's something good. I sought for a man who will stand in the gap. That's what the Bible says. So you are standing in the gap for your home. And women have that mantle readily given to them by God for them to make use of it. Let's rise up on our feet as we just open our mouth and begin to say, Father, we just thank you. We give you glory. We give you adoration. We we'll bless your name, Jesus. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Glory be to your holy name. Can you just appreciate God? 